Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another video. Star my friend Bob. In fact, Bob just walked in, so how Bob? Let's have a start. Oh, that's cool, mate. That's cool. You sound like me, full of cold, mate. I am full of cold. Uh, how are we doing? I'm all right, mate. Right. Dying on my feet. Uh, me and John's full of cold. <laughs> um, this week, I'm going to be finishing off the Moor and Wright vernier that uh, was sent to me. Uh, needed a screen replacement. And we're going to have uh, a dig at a rather unusual DTI, which belongs to uh, one of John's friends. So, thanks for all the comments, and let's get cracking. This is the um, Moore and Wright that was sent to me. Uh, the guy said, could I fix it for him? It had a broken screen. Uh, as I said, I mentioned on the last one, why they're making them out of glass, I don't know. So... There's the original broken glass one. Um, I showed you how to take that out. Now, let me knife. This brown stuff here, what you see around here, it's double sided sticky tape. This is the, the top half, so when you take the brown tape off, it's like sticky underneath. I did that down home because it was rather fiddly. And this is the lens that I've made to replace the broken one. Um, by hand, I, I haven't got no thin masking tape or anything, but by hand, I've painted the silver line. There's a silk there's, on the original one. There's a silver line, and I've just roughly painted the silver line. Basically, all the silver lines for is to cover where the double-sided sticky tape is. Um, so the next thing is now well, I'm going to give it a wipe over, take the brown tape off, and stick it down. Now. Some of you might say, why don't they use like super glue or something like that to glue it in place? Um, the problem is there, if you ever need to take it back out, you've glued it in place, you're not going to back out again. Because um, once you've done it once, and if the screen becomes badly scratched or whatever, um, you can always replace it again. Just quick blow out with me. Because um, you're like, one, now plastic it won't break it'll scratch yes but um you can always use it as, a, as another template to make another one um so just get my glasses on get now now oh. this is the this fiddly bit removing this brown tear When I say it was murder putting it on, it was murder putting it on. Um, because it's so thin, you've got to make sure that you are just removing the brown tape and not the glue. It's the the um, the uh, double sided sticky itself. One of those fiddly jobs. I get them all at time. A little bit more. As I say, anything's a bonus, as it was with the with the with the glassing. That's the glass. That's as I showed you how to take it out with a bit of masking tape. Couldn't use it, uh, but now. That I've worked my little bit of magic with. I'll make sure I get this the right way around because I've only got one chance at it. There we go. That's in. Next thing to do, I wanted a new battery. I'll put a new battery in for the lad. There we go. 
say the screen say that's plastic yes it's plastic but if it gets scratched just like you do on the DTIs just a bit of metal polish will clean it up you can read it it's functional does what it wants it is on the tin well there we go I'll put it back in its box right now this this is a uh, rather interesting one it's a DTI gauge um, as a plunger on the front and there's an indexer on the top across there there and basically you push the plunger and it moves but as you can see it's running very slow so it doesn't actually belong to me, it doesn't belong to John, it belongs to a friend of his it's actually a brown and sharp um, which I think is more prevalent in the USA than what it is in the UK um, but I'm going to start ripping it apart now all I'm going to do is clean it. I'm not going to over polish it so it looks nice and shiny like a mirror. Because um, I don't do things like that. Um, originally it would have been made like that but all this day and age you, don't, you want to just preserve it rather than... If you make it too shiny you're not going to use it. It's, it's going to be... Someone just shoved, oh that's too good to use that. I'll just shove that in my drawer. Um, it's the first time I've seen in one of these, so eyes down, first number. Oh, and there we go. That's very interesting. So basically, you push the plunger at the front here, pushes, pushes that main bar there. I'll get my finger out the way. It's got a lever here, pushes that lever there, which then. In turn moves this lever here which is shows you the graduations on the front now it's rather dirty um, so all I'm going to do is rip it apart put it in my little box take it home I could bring the ultrasonic tank back and show you what to do but it's, it's pointless showing you that because um, it, it's, it's a slow process um, of what to do. So what I'll do is everything what comes off will go into this magic little wooden box here. So it's like anything else. Oh, uh, I don't know. I've always fancied having to go fixing a pocket watch. But unfortunately I look on eBay and I look at the prices and I think well, I'm not going to pay that for a pocket watch that may end up just being thrown in the bin um, but if it's your own then I'm quite confident taking this to bits um, if it's your own and it's not sentimental value and you don't mind if you might break it then have a go that's all it's about is just having a go um, You might lose the odd screw, but if you've got your own workshop, you should be able to replace the screw. Um, John won't have any of these screws, like they're too small for John. <laughs> he just looked over and went, <laughs> uh, so, mm. Three mil, three mil, what about me? I was doing 1.6s the other day. Yeah, well, uh, three mil, yeah. Take the little hair spring off. Take that screw out of there. Drop it in there. Ah, there's some noisy people about, you know. <laughs> Not done to it's your workshop, mate. Let's go out there. Let's just rotate it around. Must have had a notch in. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, I've never taken one apart before, so I'm just basically feeling the way. Obviously, that's got to lift off that. 
There we go. Oh, 180 chucks it on the floor. That's the little index there. I'll give it in the shot there. That's a little point there. And that's the little arm. Um, all like counter lever really. Um, as I say, it just wants a good clean. Um, I know where that wash should come from, it came from in there. Uh, this is the next puzzle. Will that go out that way? There it is. So there's the plunger. You can see it's all that bit there, all dirty. All the way around there. That should be all nice and clean because that actually basically like a piston. That goes up and down in there, and that works against this plunger, which then works the the low movement. Now it's got oil on it, um, but it's all just gummed up. But I've never ever seen a a, um, a DTI like that. And what's the? Is it a DTI or just a, or just a? It's not a DTI, is it? Because DTI is a dial test indicator. Ah, well, it doesn't matter. It's still, it's but still it's a, a test a, indicator. Ah, it's not a dial. Or no, it's not a dial. It's a test indicator. Um, basically, how you would set it up. A um, bit different to say. You've got zero in the middle, so you would preload it so the needle, which I'm just chucking in there, will be on the zero. Imagine me standing knife blades the zero. So you put it on there, pre preload it so it'll be on the zero. Then whatever you're clocking in, it would basically you would adjust whatever you're clocking in till uh, it stays on the zero. Or whatever you want to clock it in on, you know what I mean? But pretty unusual. Um but next time you see it it'll be all not shiny, but all the surface rust will be coming off it. It'll be nice and clean in there. And all the moving parts will be all nicely cleaned and we'll put it back together. So it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. And what I do with these letters here, so I, I did a bit of video, but John hasn't done them yet, we've, we've all been poorly. How to, how to highlight these graduations. Now, if I was, do, I'm going to be doing it on these ones, I wouldn't clean that with anything until I've done the graduations um, for the simple reason if I clean that then put the graduations and clean it again you're actually going to restart removing metal from here and I don't want to remove any metal I want to clean it yes so basically with them um, I haven't brought one with us John's got bought as a set the little fibre scratch brushes they've made of fibre glass and you, you go in and clean it all up clean all the, the muck and the dirt out the, out the indentations and I think what I'll do is I'll use um, paint rather than anything else and let the paint go hard and polish it off then uh, you'll be able to see the graduations better so there we go it's all in its little magic box like that and next time you see it it'll be all nice and shiny so that's it for now tiddly boop